All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And while I've been down kind of recovering, I've been out here in the shop trying to do a few things that I've been wanting to do. Uh, and today I've hit a milestone with the CNC. Uh, as many of you know, I have the Shapoko uh, 5 Pro CNC that I bought back in, I think it was February or March. It was actually February when I ordered it. Maybe it was like middle of March when I got it. Uh, but I've had it for a while. And one of the things that a lot of people, you know, like about CNCs and being able to set them up is being able to wirelessly control the machine in order to set your job up. And with Shapoko, uh, I've been running Carbide Motion uh, software on it. And so it really wasn't set up like some of the other machines to where you have a controller that goes with the actual machine itself. So but with a little engineering, guys, guess what? Got her working. So... Setting up those jobs, getting everything like I want it, lining it up with the corner of the material, no longer a problem as long as I have this. Uh, the, the thing about it is you do have limited operability, but for what I want it for, to be able to set up the jobs and index the corner of the material with the machine, it works great. All right, guys, so first things first, you're going to need two things. Uh, one, you're going to need a computer that has Bluetooth. Uh, so not all computers have Bluetooth compatibility. Uh, the, the newer the version of the Bluetooth, like version 5, is probably better than some of the older uh, versions of Bluetooth software. Uh, these controllers can be a little tricky with some of the older versions. So if you don't have Bluetooth or if you have an older version of Bluetooth, I'm going to drop links down below for both the Bluetooth, Bluetooth dongle that I'm running on my little mini PC over there as well as the controller. So those are the two things hardware-wise that you're going to need. That's it. The Bluetooth dongle, if you don't already have Bluetooth capabilities, and a, an Xbox controller. This is one of the lesser expensive controllers, but it's still around 50 bucks. So, once you get those guys, everything else is simply software and setup. And I'm gonna try to uh, help you guys out with this. I'm gonna give you all the resources, all the download locations that you're gonna need for these things. Uh, but come on and uh, let's look at the computer and I'll show you exactly the tools that you're gonna need to use to uh, set this up. All right, so this is uh, Carbide Motion. The trick to this and the kicker to this, guys, is pretty much in order for this to work, because I'm using basically a controller that is mapped to activate hotkeys. Uh, so when I hit the up button or down button or whatever on the pad, you can see on the machine, it's moving the X and Y axis. But the way that it is doing this is because I have programmed hotkeys, uh, which are basically just little shortcut commands uh, inside the software. So in order to use the wireless controller to move the machine, of course, you're going to have to have this screen pulled up uh, to do so, which to move the machine with the keyboard and mouse, you also got to have this machine, this software pulled up. So that's no big shock. All right, guys. So yes, this little computer that I'm running, this little Dell computer doesn't come uh, automatically with Bluetooth. So I am running a little Bluetooth dongle. And like I said, I'll put a link down in below. It's going to be the TP link. Uh, Bluetooth adapter. The only thing currently that I've got connected to the computer is the Xbox controller also. Uh, I don't know that you have to have it per se uh, to be able to run these controllers, but when I was setting mine up, for some reason, my machine actually did ask me to install the, the Xbox game Xbox game plugin, uh, possibly for some of the adapters for the controller or whatnot. But once you get the controller paired with the PC uh, and you've got the carbide motion software installed to the machine uh you've got the controller connected the next thing you need to do is map this carbide motion uh shortcuts so the way you're going to do that is you're going to want to download anti-micro and anti-micro is one of those apps that you can get here in the uh all right, guys, and for a bonus uh, for this video to make things a little easier on you, I'm going to go over here, and we're going to go through anti-micro for just a second in case you stumble on that. Uh, and I'm also going to cheat a little bit and give you my configuration file. It's down below uh, in the description. You can download that, save yourself a few steps. So let's go into anti-micro, and I'm going to go ahead and install it, set it up, and we're going to go ahead and import the settings that I've attached down below, just like you can when you get yours. So let's go down below. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this install on Windows button right here. 
uh, what this is going to do is going to open up this Microsoft Store here and allow me to install uh, this software. Like I said, this is just a little tiny plug-in software. It's nothing huge. Uh, it's not going to be anything major. So we got that done, and now I just need to open the software. Microsoft Store. So if you go in here and just search for anti-micro, it's going to pull this up. And then once you, once you download this, then you can just open the app. And what this app does is it enables you to install shortcuts, more or less, for the controller. And you can see I've got, I've got some of mine mapped. I'm not using hardly any of the buttons compared to what there is that you can use. Uh, I've got mine mapped that uh, as far as the, the jog speed, this is one, two, three, and four going from slowest over to fastest. This is going to be the one millimeter speed, and this is the fast move. Uh, I've got the Z axis over here, page up and page down on the right joystick. And then the left joystick, this is my X and Y axis. That's pretty much all the stuff that you're going to be able to control uh, with this controller. And you can see when I hit the, the left or right or up or down on the left joystick or up or down on the right joystick. And the D-pad, when I hit those, it's triggering it. And once you download this software or put it in here, the way that you need to go about programming these buttons is you basically just click on one of them and then click on the keyboard key that you want it to represent it's that simple so setting it up is going to be really really simple and these are basically uh the the setup codes for that now you can also use this controller in carbide create as well i don't do a lot of designing in carbide create so i don't have a need for that but you can using their macros also do that and I'll just show you the way to, if you want to look at those uh, hotkeys, and it's going to bring you over to their website. And they've got this little cool little thing right here. You can download this. This is all the different buttons and what they do. So even though I've got my numbers uh, mapped a certain way, uh, there are other buttons. Like I'm using page up and page down to jog the Z. But you can actually use these. So if, you know, however you want to set yours up, uh, you, can, you can do it that way. But this is just one of those things. It's a little, like I said, not necessarily something that you need, guys. It's more of a, uh, a luxury item, I guess you could say. But I think that it'll definitely help with being able to uh, line up jobs and get them set up correctly. And it, let's just face it, it it's cool. All right, guys. And for a bonus uh, for this video to make things a little easier on you, I'm going to go over here and we're going to go through anti-micro for just a second in case you stumble on that. Uh, and I'm also going to cheat a little bit and give you my configuration file. It's down below uh, in the description. You can download that, save yourself a few steps. So let's go into anti-micro and I'm going to go ahead and install it, set it up. And we're going to go ahead and import the settings that I've attached down below, just like you can when you get yours. So let's go down below. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this install on Windows button right here. Uh, what this is going to do is going to open up this Microsoft Store here and allow me to install uh, this software. Like I said, this is just a little tiny plug-in software. It's nothing huge. Uh, it's not going to be anything major. All right, guys, so the first thing to do is get our controller connected. And depending on which controller you have, uh, you should have a button that will put it into pairing mode. Uh, mine, it's up near where the USB port is. Just hold it in for a few seconds, and it'll start flashing. Uh, and I'm going to hit uh, add Bluetooth or other device. Now, you can uh, you see right here where it says everything else, Blackrock controllers with wireless adapter and all that. Don't pay that any attention. I'm just using it as a Bluetooth device. Click in there. You'll see Xbox controller. Hit connect on that little button right there, and boom, you're connected. Once it gets connected on your controller, you should see this little light turn solid. Uh, the button that I was pressing is up here. Just press it and hold it for a few seconds. But the light should turn to solid. So back to the computer. All right, so now that we've got that connected, we're going to close that. And we're going to go back over here, and I'm going to open up uh, Anti-Micro. And when I open it up, it should see the controller uh, that I have. And this is my new controller here. So you can see I don't have anything set up. 
So just if you want to use my pre-configured file that I sent for you guys, the way you're going to do it is go over here and go to load. And when it clicks, it's going to open up like right here. Uh, I've got mine. Uh, yours will be in downloads, of course. Mine is going to be over here in this CNC file software. Uh, and this is my Xbox controller carbide motion mapping. So I'm just going to hit and hit it open and open that. So now you can see it changed these. So my left stick is programmed. Right stick is programmed and the D-pad. And that's the only ones that I have programmed. I am only using this to jog the machine uh, for setting to zero and stuff. So that's, uh, that's all you got to do to get that set up. I'm going to hit the save button right there just to get that to save. Or you can do save as. If you want to save your configuration somewhere so that you'll know where it, it, where it is, you can also come over here and, let's say, go into your My Documents folder and... Uh, just name it controller settings or controller configuration or whatever and hit save and that will give you the ability to be able to go back and load that or share it with somebody else or whatever so that's it once you get that done guys you're ready to go i do not have a shapoko machine on this computer but you saw how it worked with the other one so guys yes i think it's cool like i said so <laughs> To be able to sit over here or when I'm over there, try to position that material. Because that's one of the things. I've got a wireless keyboard, so it's it's okay. Like, it's not terrible. But the, using a keyboard and trying to lean across the machine sometimes can be a little, a little awkward. Uh, but with the controller, I think it's going to be a lot easier for me. Like I said, I can, I can do it with long, like, fast movements. Or if I just want to do one millimeter increments, I can hit the d-pad right here hit the right arrow on the d-pad and now mine's going to do like one millimeter steps so i think that's pretty cool that's going to make lining up these jobs a lot easier and maneuvering uh the device if you're let's say if if, if you're using a trim router and you're wanting to let's say draw a line on your spoil board or do some marking to your spoil board uh, you could do it with this, you know, turn the router on, and you could actually drive the router uh, manually with this to do that. So there's some other applications, but it's cool. I like it. Uh, I've been wanting that capability, and uh, I figured out how to do it, and it didn't cost me all that much money. I already had the Bluetooth dongle, so basically I just had to source myself a place, uh, Xbox controller. But uh, like I said, I'll drop links, Amazon links, in the description down below. If you're interested in any of these parts, as well as my affiliate link for uh, the Shapoko 5. Uh, I, I love the machine. It's done me a great job, and it's sharp. It looks good. <laughs> and uh, it has made enough money to pay for itself since March. So I'm really happy with that. So until next time, guys, uh, enjoy. And I hope this uh, helps you out. And if nothing else, gives you something to work on for a little while and keep you busy like me. So... <laughs> Till next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.